Now, folks, I'm going to turn you to the 13th chapter of Acts. I hope you know some of the contents of this chapter because it's a very cardinal chapter where the missionaries were sent out. Let's read a few verses. Acts 13. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius and Cyrene, and Manion, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John, John Mark, to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Papos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Now, my dear friends, you notice, first of all, something which many people do not take careful note of. What is it? You know, suddenly on impulse, a fellow thinks, hey, let me do this. Let me take off on this cruise or missionary you know, they call it missionary visits or whatever. I don't know that people have such funny terminology these days by which they mean they're just going to be tourists looking at a mission station or something for a couple of weeks. And if they stand a little longer, stay a little longer, they may even call themselves church planters. My goodness. I, I feel I am more designed and capable of being a demolition contractor. <laughs> you see, rather than a builder. What did Jesus say? I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against. I will build. So, folks, one is not to shoot off at a tangent and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do this and do that. Here, the direction was given by the Holy Ghost to these assembled prophets and teachers. And when they obeyed, 
They then fasted and prayed. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So it's very clear. This is the pattern. If you miss that pattern, you're on the wrong foot and headed in the wrong direction. There was a praying church behind these people. Unfortunately, today, we have gotten into the Christian jargon, which says, pray for me, pray for me. And the people nod, yes, yes, I'll pray for you when I, when I snore. Huh. Well, my dear friends, it's all a big joke. And people come to me and say, pray for me, pray for me. I say, very well. But you know, I meet thousands of people all the time. And you need to remind me, my old computer <laughs> is overloaded. And you need to remind me. Oh, of course. They don't wish to write even two lines on a card. That's too much trouble. But to say, pray for me, pray for me, and the pastor or whoever says, yes, yes, I'll pray for you. Amounts to a lie, a big lie, very often. But here was a praying, fasting church as they ministered to the Lord. Notice that. They were not just into what? Giving out handouts. You know, relief work is a very demanding work and a very hard work. You know, someone said to me, a very important doctor, well known for his social work, said, brother, you know, you're doing so much work and helping so many. We must have some milk powder delivered to you. I said, oh no, oh no. Well, finally, you know, I couldn't get him off my back, as some people would say. And finally, I said, okay, send me some. A limited quantity. And along with that quantity came a stipulation. So many ounces for each child and this, that, and the other. I said, look, if I should entrust this job to some of these evangelists or Christian workers, they're sure to not to keep any accounts. That means soon the whole thing can be a big fraud. So I said quickly, no more, brother, sorry, no more. I can't expose my workers to some temptation because regularly donated milk powder turns up in the market. You see, that happens all the time. I said, nothing doing, none of this. If we are ready to sacrifice, let us sacrifice. But we are not going to distribute any of this from America. 
You know, here we see this strange phrase, they ministered to the Lord. Ever heard of that? Ministering, all right. Giving a few handouts, ministering to people. We've heard of all that. But have you heard of ministering to the Lord? No. Most uncommon kind of thing, you know. The Lord hath pleasure in his people. You know, my dear people, that we can minister and have communion with God. What a rich thing that is. We are lost in the nitty-gritty of doing this and doing that and being hustled off our feet. And we feel, hey, I'm doing a great job, you know. But what is missing? Waiting upon the Lord. Communing with the Lord. It's missing. However, when they fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. You know, we are very careful to say, who is your sponsor? Huh? You know, in that region which uh, was just shown to you, all the people, some of those boys and uh, the choirs, Bible students and others, they desperately crave sponsors. Somebody who will say, hey, we'll send you $10, $20, $50. Now I say, what about the sponsorship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? You don't want that? You want some fellow to say, promise you a little money? And then you'd say, he's my sponsor. You know, friends, okay. Some people have sponsored orphans, taken good care of poor children. Okay that might have its place, but not to displace the Holy Spirit. They were sent, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, very soon, the port of call was Cyprus. You know, I went right across Cyprus, in fact, Cyprus was so much on my heart and I never liked to retreat from any venture of faith. But to secure a visa at that time that we sent a young man there was very difficult because Turkey had invaded Cyprus and occupied overnight the northern part of Cyprus. And over the fence I could see that part, the Turkish part, and the Greek part, which is more to the south of Cyprus, is the part that is, has been seeing a lot of development and so on. Well, 
they seem to have kind of sorted it out a little. I don't know how much they can integrate that small island. Anyway, when uh, the missionaries went into Cyprus, what did they do? They landed up shortly in the court. What? The gospel in the court? You don't hear of that these days, do you? Well, the television brings out the marriage of royalty or a coronation scene or something like that. Apart from that, you don't have the gospel declared in the court. The court of the ruler, the Roman ruler. And what do we see, folks? The ruler himself called and desired to hear the word of God. But, eighth verse, Elimas, the sorcerer, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Elimas, the sorcerer. You see, sorcerers have found a spot close to the hearts of many politicians today. While preaching in South America, I discovered that some of those countries have got powerful magicians and the native magician seems to have a tremendous influence upon the conduct of the national affairs. So while preaching, I had to challenge some of those fellows. The press got a little annoyed, naturally, and said, Oh, this man is preaching against our native culture. <laughs> of course I would. Native culture. What is that culture? Much of it is occult. Occult. A lot of dim demonology. You know, some of our erudite theologians said, let's not touch their culture. Let's not touch their native customs. It, there would be a furor. So, let's give them a nice what shall I say, court of Christian paint. We won't touch the heart. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You know, many of those people whom you saw now, they are such a variety of tribes. When it comes to marriage, the tribal chief, the village head, will say, What? You planning to marry somebody outside the tribe? Get out of here and never more be seen in the vicinity of this place. 
What? What's that? He hath made all men of one blood, all nations of one blood. What's happened to that? You know, my dear friends, I don't spare the local culture. It does not matter. If it is occult, I'll call it by its proper name. That's of the devil. And it must go. If it is something which compromises righteousness, it's out. You call it headman's rule or anybody's rule. I don't care. The word of God is supreme. My dear friends, they took the word of God to the court. Are we doing that today? No. I remember one of those great preachers, hardly a stone throw from Buckingham Palace, praying on Sunday, the follies of the court. Yes, he had the courage to pray about the follies of the court. But today, people have lost their grit, their backbone, they have thrown righteousness out, and they think they are going to preach a gospel of grandma's love. You know, my grandson never does anything wrong. Rubbish. You know, folks, eighth verse, but Elimas the sorcerer withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. What do you think of the status of preachers today? We've got a bunch of pygmy preachers. Moral lightweights. Who don't have the courage to preach the truth. Now, when the gospel went to the court, and there was a roadblock. Did Paul and Barnabas back off? Okay, we had tried, you know, brother. We did try, didn't we? Time for a cup of coffee, brother. My dear friends, None of that rubbish. What did Paul do? Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Let us pray. Loving Father, forgive us, forgive me. Have I allowed the gospel and its power to become Something which, it, which has lost its potency. 
Lord, is it my life that has caused this declension? Whatever it takes, let our lives parallel the word of God. Please, Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen.